Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. I got my coffee here. Hopefully uh, you got something good to drink too. And today we're going to continue with Entity Framework. I kind of took a, a turn from Entity Framework for a while. And we talked about some string methods, uh, more beginner stuff. But today we're going to go back to Entity Framework Core with C Sharp if that interests you. And you haven't seen the first, I don't know, 10 or so videos, go back and do that. Hit subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. Uh, and you want to become a world-class programmer like myself. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but I am constantly learning, and that's what this channel is, is me sharing what I learn with you guys. Hopefully that helps. And, uh, yeah, let's. I, today's video kind of answers a question that I had with Entity Framework, and that is, what if we don't want to return an entity as a result when we query the database? So let me open up the database. I forgot to do that. And I have this basic demo uh, console application, the C-sharp console application. We have two entities. We have this cars class. So uh, here's all of the properties for that. And then colors. And then in the next video, this is going to be like a two-parter. The next video, we're going to talk about joining those two together. And uh, maybe at the end of this video, we'll kind of touch on that, what I want to do. But let me open up the database. We'll check out what's in there real quick. And then... Um, We'll see how to not return an entity, but really an anonymous type or anonymous object. Okay, so here's the database. I have two tables, cars, and colors right now. If we go to the cars, you can see I have two different cars, each with an ID, a color ID, and a model. And then the colors table has a hex value for a color. This isn't legit. Uh, I, this isn't the hex color for blue, so don't think it is. And then red is... I just type something random for these. And then what I want to do is, let's say I want to return instead of the ID, well, instead of everything, right? Because we did the code first, and I'm bringing up the wrong thing. We, we did the code first where I created the entity, and then with these entities, I created the database. And I don't want to return all of this. Maybe I want to return just these two, and then maybe another column that I make up on the fly. Maybe I want to say, oh, this, this object type that we're getting is the color table. Or maybe I could say a table. What table is this coming from? This is coming from the colors table. Something like that. And you can use your imagination to uh, see how you might want to add things to the existing entity and take some away and then make your own, basically, and just return that. So to do this, we're going to use something called link. If you never heard of a link before, my simplest explanation is it's a way to query for data in C Sharp. It's a language integrated query or link is the name for a set of technologies based on the integration of query capabilities directly into the C Sharp language. It's a way of using a string to say what I want from a data set. So they give this example here. We have this array of scores. And then they use link, which is just this right here. It says from score and scores. So score is an alias. Scores is the data source. Then they have a where statement. And they say what to select. Select the score. So here's scores. They say where scores are greater than 80, select all of those. And theoretically, it should return these three. Let's go ahead and kind of use both Entity Framework and this to create an anonymous object that is going to hold the hex color, the color name, and then the table name. So I'm going to create a variable that when we use this link query and we say, get me all of this stuff, this is what's going to hold all of that stuff. And I'm going to say var, uh, let's call it, let me zoom in too. Hopefully you guys can see it. I'm on my laptop today. Um, so hopefully you can see everything just as well. Var, let's call it uh, test object is equal to and this is where we can use the link. And you might need to bring in system.link if you haven't already. Though I think when I created this, at least for the console application, I already brought this in. Um, so hopefully you already do. But from, and then we can create some kind of alias. I'm just going to call it cols for colors in, and then db.colors because we're using entity framework. Here's our context, which I called test context. And then we can put a where clause if we wanted to. So I could say where, and if we go and look back at our data, let's say where ID is equal to 1. So this should only return this row. 
where calls.id is equal to one. And then what do we want to select? We want to select a new object that we're going to create. So we use the new keyword, we use the curly braces, and then here's where we create our anonymous type. And just so you know what an anonymous type is, it's a read-only object, basically, that has keys and values, um, and that's what we're going to use. So our first key, let's just call it color, which is going to equal calls dot color name. So the column in the database color name. Uh, what was the other one? Hex. So let's call that hex, that key, and calls dot color hex. And then the last one isn't in the database, right? These two are actually columns in our database. We have color name and color hex. But like I said, I don't want to return everything in our database and I want to return something different. This is a way to do that. So I can create another one in this object called table and this is going to, or maybe table name is a better name. And this is just going to be the string, not table, colors, because that's the table name, right? So here we, we look, uh, we brought in the entity DB colors. If we go back to that, there's no table name property here, right? There's ID color name and color hex. And now uh, we could say add this to what's being returned when we select from the database. And because when we use link, what it's going to return is iterable. Uh, so we can use a for each loop to loop through all of this and display what's being returned. In our case, only one column is gonna be returned. I'm going to, after I show this, uh, remove this where clause so we can bring in both and loop through those. But for each object in test object, I'm just going to do a console.writeLine and let's, uh, let's do a string interpolation and say the color is this value. So it's going to be object.color because that's what we named uh, the key. And the hex value is going to be object.hex. And then lastly, the table name is going to be object.table name, right? Makes sense. And at the very end, we need to do a console.read so we can read this before it disappears off the screen. And yeah, let's go ahead and run this. Um, so once again, it's going to use link and entity framework to query from our database with this where clause, it's going to return not only parts of what it, it returned from the database query, but also we're going to add some other stuff to what it returns that we're going to print it out. And here we go. We have color, which is blue, hex is this, and table name is colors because that was a hard-coded string value. And if we look, one is blue and that's text value, so that's correct because we put the where clause where ID is equal to one. And let's go ahead and just comment out that where clause and run it again. And here, now we get both of the values in our database. So in the next video, what I, the ultimate goal of this was maybe since we have two related databases, in this case, we have colors and we have cars, maybe I want to return an object or a list of objects that return the model of the car. And since color ID is linked in this table, I also want to show the color. So for example, it's going to say Prius, which is blue, and Mustang, which is red. And we're going to link these two tables together using something very similar to this. And uh, we're going to join them and then only return those two values because those two values are the only ones we care about. We don't care about all the other joined values. Um, so that was the ultimate goal of this. This is kind of like the, the prelim preliminary stuff. And uh, hopefully, you know, Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully this wasn't too confusing. And I hope to see you in the next one. I think it's going to be even more useful. So stay tuned.